Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity today to voice my strong support for this very worthy and necessary legislation. I'm proud to promote and support Bill S-211, an act that would make June 19th a national day to raise awareness for sickle cell disease, or SCD for short. And I want to thank Senator Jane Cordy and the member from Dartmouth Cole Harbor for bringing this extremely, bill, extremely important bill to this House. By supporting this bill, we can join the African Union, United Nations, and the World Health Organization in observing World Sickle Cell, Day, World Sickle Cell Awareness Day on the 19th of June every year. Mr. Speaker, setting aside the dedicated day isn't about joining an international club. It is about supporting people living with sickle cell disease, a devastating genetic disorder that affects millions of people around the world, including an estimated 5,000 Canadians. People with sickle cell disease experience frequent bouts of debilitating pain that damages their quality of life and which very often shortens their life. This is a very complex disease that still baffles the medical community. To try to explain it simply, people who have SCD inherit two abnormal hemoglobin genes, one from each parent. At least one of the two abnormal genes causes a person's body to produce an abnormal type of hemoglobin called hemoglobin S. When the person has two hemoglobin S genes, the disease is called sickle cell anemia. This is the most common and generally most severe kind of sickle cell disease. Mr. Speaker, without getting too technical, sickle hemoglobin is not like normal hemoglobin. It can form stiff rods within the red blood cell, changing it into a crescent or sickle shape. These cells are not flexible and stick to the vessel walls. This can cause a blockage that slows or stops the flow of blood. When this happens, Mr. Speaker, oxygen can't reach nearby tissues, leading to a long list of complications that can compromise the person's life. Sickle cell disease provokes attacks of a sudden, severe pain that can occur, that can occur without warning. The person usually needs to go to the hospital for treatment. Blood transfusions and drug therapies are used to treat and manage this disease and stem cell transplants are the only potential cure. Mr. Speaker, it's hard to watch a child suffering from a pain attack, but it's heartbreaking to know that this is something they will rarely escape as they grow older. Adolescents and adults with SCD often suffer from chronic pain that limits their ability to attend school or go to work. Needless to say, this has negative ripple effects on their families' incomes and housing. But even that doesn't capture the long-term consequences of sickle cell disease. Over a lifetime, the disease can cause major organ damage that eventually results in premature death. Tragically, most will endure excruciating pain for most of the years that they have. As much as it, this takes a terrible toll on the individuals involved and their loved ones, it also comes at a very high price for the healthcare system. The lifetime cost of a patient with sickle cell disease has been estimated at $9 million. In Canada, the total cost to treat patients with sickle cell disease for a lifetime may be approximately $4.5 billion. Mr. Speaker, more than dollars and cents, common sense dictates that we must do whatever we can to improve the lives of these individuals. I've seen patients who suffer from this serious blood disorder. In every case, I can attest to the serious health challenges that they face. So I know how crucial it is that we raise, raise awareness for sickle cell disease. I also know from experience the importance of genetic testing for pros prospective parents and the necessity of screening newborns for the disorder. Early diagnosis and regular medical care can prevent complications and improve the well-being of effective indi individuals and their families. 
Sickle cell disease is most common among individuals whose ancestors come from India, Saudi Arabia, and Mediterranean and Sub-Saharan African countries. But in rare cases, it also affects Caucasians. One of the best ways Canadians can help is by donating blood to provide sickle cell disease patients with the blood transfusions that they require, not just on June 19th, but every day of the year. Donors are especially needed from ethnic communities whose heritage traces back to Mediterranean, Middle East, South Asia, Africa, and the Caribbean. We also need to find ways to better educate Canadians about this disease and explore ways to work more productively with our partners all across the country to provide better support for sickle cell disease patients and their families. Especially important, we need to continue research programs that spawn new sickle cell disease treatments and will someday lead to a cure. Mr. Speaker, advancing these goals is precisely what Bill S-211 sets out to do. Once passed, this act will dictate June 19th as National Sickle Cell Awareness Day in Canada. This will send a clear signal to everyone as a nation to improve the diagnosis and treatment of sickle cell disease and demonstrate our unwavering support for Canadians living with this terrible disease. Earlier this year, I had the pleasure of meeting with the members of the Sickle Cell Disease Association of Canada, and I'm proud of the work already underway in this country to alleviate the chronic pain of sickle cell disease sufferers. Through the Canadian Institute of Health Research, the Government of Canada has invested resources in, reared, in rare disease research, including $1.3 million in sickle cell disease research since 2010. Top researchers across Canada are actively working to identify long-term solutions to the health problems facing people with sickle cell disease. CIHR is also a founding member of the International Rare Disease Consortium. It was established to explain the causes of rare disorders and to develop diagnostic tools and treatments. Mr. Speaker, there are currently four sickle cell disease clinic trials underway as part of this major international research initiative. These studies will contribute to increasing our knowledge of, about the disorder and hopefully lead to discovery of new treatments while ultimately pinpointing the cure people with SCD seek. Until that day comes, Mr. Speaker, the Government of Canada will continue to work with our provincial and territorial partners. Together, we will address the health challenges confronting Canadians as we transform Canada's health system to ensure it meets the meat it meets the needs of each and every one of us. Mr. Speaker, it is now up to all the parliamentarians to do their part by designating June 19th as National Sickle Cell Awareness Day in Canada. I encourage each member to lend their support to Bill, C to Bill S-211, which will provide people living with sickle cell disease the national recognition that they deserve. And once again, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank Senator Jane Cordy and the member from Dartmouth Coal Harbor for bringing this extremely and relevant piece of legislation to this House. Canadians with sickle cell disease are counting on us to improve their lives and livelihoods as we improve their health and quality of life. Let's make sure we don't let them down. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.